What makes the Voyagers remarkable is both what they did 20 and 30 years ago and what they're going to do in the generation to come. Both ships were built for the possibility of conducting a four-planet grand tour of the outer solar system, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. Voyager 2 made that grand tour and finished it passing Neptune in 1989. Voyager 1 bounced up out of the plane of the solar system after passing Saturn and thus made only a two-planet tour. The Voyager spacecraft are twin ships built in the days when NASA typically would build sort of an air and a spare and launch them together. They were launched in 1977 and probably won't run out of power at least until 2025. The Voyagers were originally interplanetary probes, but after 1989 when Voyager 2 passed Neptune, the mission was rechristened the Voyager Interstellar Probes. And what the, the spacecraft are trying to do now, and are very close to doing, is break beyond what's called the heliopause. The point at the end of the solar system at which the charged particles streaming from the sun, the solar wind, bump up against the tenuous helium and hydrogen that fill the interstellar medium and come to a pause, a stop. Once you punch through that curtain, you're in interstellar space. The heliopause is thought to exist about 12 billion miles from the Sun, which is more than twice the maximum distance of Pluto. Uh, currently, Voyager 2 is about 9 billion miles away from the Sun, so it's getting close. And Voyager 1 is 11 billion miles away, so it could pass at any point. Now keep in mind also that the Voyagers put 330 million miles on their odometer every year, so three years from now, both will have added a billion. Perhaps the most lyrical thing about the Voyagers are their famed golden records. Affixed to the side of both ships are 12 inch gold anodized discs about the same size as an old phonograph album and they work the same way too. Encoded in their analog grooves are music from Earth, pictures from Earth, Greetings from world leaders. I send greetings on behalf of the people of our planet. Even greetings from the children of Earth. Hello from the children of planet Earth. The thinking being that if any extraterrestrial species ever finds the spacecraft and plays the discs, they can learn something about the species that was capable of sending them.